Riddle me this. What's the coolest Batman game ever to be released? The average person might say one of the Arkham games or even Lego Batman, but you want to know what the correct answer is? This one. Because it has Mr. Freeze and it coolest and, uh, can we start over? When people think about superheroes, Batman is usually one of the first to come to mind. He's one of the most important characters ever written, and many adaptations of him have contributed to his reputation. Even apart from Batman himself, many of his allies and enemies have become household names. Even his car is a common household name. There aren't that many franchises that hold this level of notoriety. Starting out as a comic book character, Batman has earned a remarkable status as a character in movies, TV shows, video games, and McDonald's. Today we're going to be looking at the gaming side of Batman media, particularly the less conventional side of it. That's right, we're talking about an educational game. Edutainment, if you will. Toxic Chill is one of the lesser known Batman games, but it's one that really requires you to think and solve issues like the Dark Knight himself. As we all know, Batman usually has to solve numeric patterns to stop the flow of toxic chemicals, so it's fairly accurate. This game was developed by The Learning Company, who many might recognize as the geniuses behind Spongebob Teaches Typing. They're one of the biggest edutainment companies to have ever existed, having made material for nearly every children's franchise from the 90s and 2000s. Many often credit them as being the true creators of the edutainment genre. While many people hold a great degree of nostalgia for the works of TLC, it's worth noting that their involvement in so many different franchises was a little controversial. In 1995, they were bought out by Softkey, a company run by the businessman Kevin O'Leary. It would later be sold to Mattel in a move that would prove disastrous for both companies. Some estimate Mattel to have lost up to $3.6 billion as a result of this merger. TLC went through a series of buyouts in its lifetime, but by the end of the 90s, edutainment had developed a less than stellar reputation. Many consider games like these to be cash grabs, low-quality games that were marketed to children. Public opinion on edutainment may be split, with many still considering it to be a quick and easy way to make money while slapping characters like Batman and Spongebob on the case, but let's take a look at this one and see how it holds up. While you're all waiting for the next big AAA Batman game, this is what I'll be playing. Before we start the game itself, I have to mention something. Whenever I start the program, I get this message. This has got to be the most ominous warning message I have ever seen. You operating system is not supported. Play at your own risk. What risk? You can't just say that and not go into detail. Is the Riddler going to take over my computer as soon as I run this? I would assume that the biggest risk would be the game not running, but that's hardly a risk and more of a disappointment. Were they trying to sound all cool and Batman-y with this? If so, they could have made it a little more obvious. Imagine seeing this as a kid. At the opening screen, you can watch a few commercials and visit the company website. You can also play the demo, even though you have the game itself. You can start the adventure by putting your name in while the voice of Batman's famous butler Alfred talks to you. Sign in to a Batman adventure. Type in your name, or find it on the list. Like with Spongebob typing, Alfred narrates the letters as you select them, so you can make him spell some unsavory words. S. I. L. L. Why? Like with many TLC games, the launcher and the game itself are different windows, which can be a little inconvenient. You can choose your difficulty, then you're brought into the opening cutscene. The Riddler and Mr. Freeze have teamed up to unleash an evil plot on the citizens of Gotham City. We then see our heroes, Batman and Robin, testing out an anti-freeze mechanism they'll use later on. Good on them for the foreshadowing. Alfred then comes in and draws their attention to the broadcast the villains have taken over. Also, there's a bat symbol on the teacup here. Can't drink bat tea without your bat cup. The Riddler and Mr. Freeze explain their plan to freeze Gotham. Right away, I want to note that the acting is actually pretty good here. They definitely sound like they can pass for the characters. Soon you shall all know the cold I feel trapped in this suit. Dear me. And when Victor here told me about his plans, I just had to get in on the act. <laughs> the Riddler then gives Batman a riddle. What gets hotter when it gets colder? Then Commissioner Gordon calls to tell Batman that Mr. Freeze is freezing buildings and the Riddler broke into the Wayne Chemical Factory. For those who don't know, that's owned by Bruce Wayne. He's kinda Batman. 
Frozen buildings, sabotaged chemical plants, and an Arctic level storm on the way. Just another night in Gotham City. This is no joke, Robin. Whatever Freeze and the Riddler are up to, it has to be stopped. All right, I'll just fire up the Batmobile and we'll be on our way. Is it just me or does Batman sound a little Adam West inspired? I really appreciate it if that's the case. So now that we're in the game, I just want to mention how unexpectedly interactive it is. You can click on Batman, Robin, or Alfred to hear them make a comment about the situation, but you can also go to this back room to talk with Alfred one-on-one. -on -one. It isn't really necessary, but it's a nice feature. If you go on the computer, you can access a database that gives you some backstory on the characters and what's going on in the game. You can see some of Batman's enemies here, but I'm not sure why the Penguin and Two-Face are here when they don't appear in this particular game. They do, however, appear in the sequel, but we'll get to that another time. You can also look at your gear, getting detailed descriptions of the items you'll be using later on. I gotta give TLC credit here, I wasn't expecting this much attention to detail. You can also pull up a mini computer at any time during the game. This will show you a map, the options menu, and a help menu where Alfred will explain your current mission. Activating the mini computer's help file. Ah yes, riddles. First, select a riddle piece. Currently, you have to solve the Riddler's riddle. So to do this, you have to find a bunch of other riddles that are scattered across the city. These contain clues that'll help you find the solution to the main riddle. This is your core objective for the entire adventure. When you head to the Batmobile, you have to select a spot on the map to visit. Since the Coventry is closest, it's a fine place to start. At the Wayne Chemical Plant, the Riddler is trying to cause a toxic spill, so you have to stop him. What did they just grapple onto? In the Chemical Plant, you're given a minigame where you have to control the flow of chemicals so that they flow into the tanks at the bottom. You click arrows to dictate which tanks the chemicals flow into, and the Riddler makes comments the entire time. <laughs> no use crying over spilt chemicals, eh, Batman? If too many chemicals gather in one tank, they overflow, then you have to stop the flow into that particular tank. You also have to avoid the tanks that have cracks in them, since those will leak if anything gets inside. It's a good little mind exercise, but it isn't too hard once you get the hang of it. After you beat it, you unlock a new riddle, then Batgirl shows up with a sample because Batman and Robin forgot to take any of their own. What's interesting is that the Batgirl in this is actually Cassandra Kane instead of the usual Barbara Gordon. I honestly didn't expect to see her in this. I appreciate that the developers have an understanding of Batman beyond just a surface level. They find that the chemicals are explosive when combined with ice, which suggests that the Riddler has something more dastardly up his sleeve. Now you're probably wondering what you do with all the riddles you find. When you head back to the Batcave, you load them into the computer and you have to decode them by matching symbols to letters in order to spell out a phrase. We don't have enough to do anything yet, so let's just head to the next location. When you go to the subway, you find a bunch of frozen citizens. You can thaw them out, but this is the only part of the game where you do anything like this. You can't take the train because it's frozen, but don't worry, it'll be unfrozen later. When you head further into town, you see that Mr. Freeze has frozen a bunch of buildings. You have to use a gadget called the Firebat by studying the patterns on the building, then logging in a repeating pattern for it to follow. Like with the Riddler mission, it's a mind exercise. It can take a while, but you really feel smart when you figure it out. Also, I love the music here. Just listen to it. Whenever you complete two stages, you get a riddle, but to be honest, this drags on for a little too long. Just when you think it's over, a new stage begins. It's not that it's hard, it's just that it takes a while to complete, so it may be worth playing on easy mode just so you don't spend an hour or so on this. Once you beat the level, you get a scene where our heroes chase Mr. Freeze, then Robin dies. It's over, Mr. Snowglobe! Robin, don't! The last place you can visit is the Atomic Waste Company, where the chemicals are being leaked into Gotham's water supply. You play the same Riddler mission as before, so I guess they really liked that one. With all the core minigames complete, you might think you have enough riddles to crack the code. I will admit, trying to decode all of them is really fun. 
it might be my favorite portion of the game. Once you decode enough of them, you can connect the riddles themselves with their answers. These are meant to give hints as to where the rest of the riddles are. When you go back to the subway, it's unfrozen, but thankfully it isn't flooded. Let's board this train. That isn't what I thought they meant, but okay. Oh hey Batgirl. She's only there to tell you that the door with the Riddler's henchman behind it is locked. Oh, problem solved. Batman tells Robin to stay behind as he heads inside, then we get an entirely new section of gameplay. You're now in a platform stage filled with henchmen and collectibles. When I saw this, I got a little excited. This looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Batman also just outright tells you to check your mini computer's help file to know how to play, so I guess you can't say this game doesn't force you to use your gadgets, just like Batman always does. You have four gadgets to choose from, and you have to switch between them throughout the level as they're needed. It's really nice to run around and see all there is to see. That is, until you die and your last checkpoint is 47 kilometers away from where you were. You use the Batarang to take down obstacles for some reason, knockout pellets to take out big opponents, bolas to take out small opponents, and the other one fools you into thinking it does something. The collectibles are there to tempt you and they give you a higher score, but you really just need the riddle at the end of the stage, so they're kinda useless. Once you beat the level, you find an underground cavern where toxic chemicals are. Batman assumes that Mr. Freeze doesn't know about this, so he suspects the Riddler is just using him. This cavern is flooded with Riddler's mix of toxic chemicals, and it looks like Mr. Freeze's freezing compounds have made it down here too. You can head to the sewers of the atomic waste plant to do another side-scroller mission, then you find yourself completely lost when you're still missing two riddles. After running around all of Gotham City a few times, you might discover that if you click to the left of the Wayne Chemical Plant, it takes you to an entirely new location. This is the real Coventry. You know what that means? Another Riddler mission! At least they're easy. If you jump down this manhole, you find Batgirl, then you get this dialogue. So, what have you found down in these caves? Something going on between Riddler and Mr. Freeze. Interesting. And that's the last we see of her. You're probably wondering what the significance of Batgirl in this game was. Let's just say she shares the same purpose as the driver's license in Operation Krabby Patty. What's annoying is that you can't actually access the other manhole until you go all the way back to the Batcave and decode another riddle. Then you have to go back to where you were to see that it's now open. Why couldn't you have just gone in it before? Some detective you are leaving stones unturned like that. You get another side-scroller for the last riddle, then you see Mr. Freeze and Riddler having a little chat. This is as it should be. What I fail to see, Riddler, is how you shall profit from this. Easy, Freezy! After you've pronounced your sentence on Gotham, I'll have made my mark, too. Make his mark? I have to figure out their plans. Think, Bruce. Hey, did you hear someone call himself Bruce? Once you decode the last riddle, you can see all the selected letters, then you have to unscramble them to solve the one riddle you were trying to solve from the beginning. Once you unscramble the words, you find out that the answer is... Gotham City! Quick, to the Batcopter! You then head to your helicopter for the final mission. Mr. Freeze shoots ice into the sky and causes Gotham to freeze, allowing him to remove his helmet and throw it to the ground in front of the Riddler. I wonder what will become of this- yeah, that's what I thought. You can't say Mr. Freeze didn't do that to himself. So Riddler's underground chemicals mix with the cold and form a big question mark in the center of Gotham. The last minigame starts when Toxic Sludge pours out from several sources and heads toward the Gotham River. Batman, look! The Riddler's molten Toxic Sludge is pouring out of those tanks! If we don't stop it... It will spill out onto the streets of Gotham, eventually emptying into the river and destroying all nearby marine life. How can you be so calm about this? Not calm, Robin. Focused. I'm preparing the chemical neutralizers on board the Batcopter. If we can apply the correct neutralizers... Come on, Batman, explain the rules already. The sludge is leaking. Basically, every leaking tank has a pattern on it. You have to neutralize the sludge by choosing the neutralizer that completes the missing section. It sounds easy enough, but so many tanks are leaking and you have to work fast. Some will flow into each other and create an entirely new chemical. It's a very high-stress stage, so it works for a final level. 
It got a little challenging for me when you had to match the moon cycles, since so many of them look similar. In the final cutscene, Batman realizes where the end of the Riddler's question mark is. This allows him to stop the Riddler before he's able to set off a bunch of explosives. He is then brought to Arkham Asylum along with Mr. Freeze. And the Wayne Foundation is going to restore all the damaged sections of Gotham. Say, why do you talk about the Wayne Foundation so much? The Riddler finds out he has to share a cell with Mr. Freeze, then Batman and Robin fly away as Batman says they still have work to do. This is meant to foreshadow the sequel, Justice Unbalanced. That brings us to the end of Toxic Chill. So, what do we think? Actually, it's kinda... good? You wouldn't expect it, but for a small edutainment game, it's not bad. There's good attention to detail, the characters are true to their canon personalities, the story is decent, and some of the stages are really entertaining. It's educational in the sense that it makes you use your mind rather than solve a bunch of questions about math and history. This might actually carry more practicality as far as education is concerned. It also feels like a full-fledged Batman adventure, so the educational aspect doesn't override the story or the gameplay. Sure, there's room for improvement, but it's actually fairly decent for what it is. I think younger fans of Batman could really get some enjoyment out of this, even some older ones. Overall, the learning company did alright with this one. Oddly enough, my biggest criticism is the same one many people would give the Arkham series. Maybe they should have toned it down with the amount of Riddler missions. Thank you all so much for watching, I will see you in the next memory.